Hey everybody, Gina Mizell here alongside Danny Moran. We are in Corvallis after Oregon State's second scrimmage of fall camp, just wrapped up at Reeser Stadium across the way. And another newsy element in the secondary, I think is the thing we should probably start with. Kyle White, who was in the running back rotation, has now moved to the defensive backfield, was lining up at cornerback a little bit today. Kind of, the, it's a position group that lost some depth earlier this week with Gabe Obgard retiring, Cyril Nolan Lewis leaving the team. So you talked to Gary Anderson about that decision. Yeah, he said it was a pretty easy decision. They felt comfortable with Kyle White at that position. When I was last here on Monday, I think I noted that I didn't see Kyle White get really any reps at running back. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's not a surprise. It's only in the sense that when a JC guy comes in, they want him to play right away, and he was here in the spring. Sure. Uh, but I think. You know, to go to the other side of the ball, that also speaks highly of where Tim Cook and Artavis Pierce are as far as running back depth behind Ryan Nall because sure. that was a big concern coming into the fall. Is anyone going to establish themselves you know, as a second and third option behind Nall? And now with Pierce, Cook, and somebody like Paul Lucas, mm -hmm. who's a little more versatile, uh, I think that's probably an indication because Kyle White wasn't going to really get any reps that you know, they're feeling better about running back as well. Yeah, um, we didn't see a ton of, uh, we, we saw some 11 on 11 work as far as normal drives. We saw some special teams. We saw some red zone drills, kind of a, a, a stop and start scrimmage. It wasn't kind of a full game like experience as you would say. What else stuck out to you as far as either what you saw on the field or what maybe some guys said afterwards? I think the secondary is interesting yeah. at, at this point just because uh, a few guys were held out today. Uh, Brandon Arnold, who's expected to start at safety. Dwayne Williams, expected to start at cornerback. And, there, and Jay Irvine, who's expected to contribute. So we just saw a lot of youth and young guys. And so I think the question is, you know, are those starters going to be able to stay healthy throughout mm -hmm. the year? It's, I mean, it's a question throughout the the roster about what the depth level is, but I, I think the, the biggest curiosity at this point is are a lot of those redshirt freshmen going to be able to step up so that they can play because I think they'll probably be needed at some point. I know for you, I mean, what, did you see something similar? I know that I think the offensive line might be the biggest question. I know you spent sure. some time talking to TJ Woods. Yeah, he said that he's pretty pleased with how um, that group is progressing overall. Um, obviously, Yanni Dem Demo Gerontas is the starting center. Um, he had some snap troubles early on in camp. He said that's that's short up at least a little bit. Um, center's an interesting spot though right now because Gavin Andrews would be the number two center right now if Yanni were to get hurt or something like that. But they're still working him back slowly following his injury. So he's only been lining up at guard during 11 on 11 work. And then Trent Moore was filling in at tackle because Dustin Stanton was out today with a, with a minor thing. So he wasn't able to, to be at center. So Cammy Delp was actually taking the second team reps at, at center. And uh, TJ Wood said he was actually pretty pleased with how he performed formed in that role but so he's really the fourth team center but because of some shuffling they've had to do um, he, he was taking a lot of snaps today but I guess good experience just in case something wacky happens right and, and the thought is that Andrew would be, would be the starting right guard sure, so yes. you know as far as moving him for those you know second team reps it wouldn't quite make as much sense as far as giving him that amount of work too. right, right. Uh, another thing just notable today uh, Gary Anderson was you know Gave a lot of praise to Marcus McMarion, mm -hmm. but you know we saw some mixed things today. But as far as that backup quarterback position, that battle with Mason Moran, which you wrote about earlier in mm -hmm. the week, it, it sounds like McMarion maybe did a little bit more to distinguish himself today. Uh, and I think that would probably be beneficial for the team, obviously, if they're able to give Moran a redshirt year and. and not have to burn it so quickly. Yeah, that's why I wrote about it earlier in the week because right. I was a little bit surprised that Anderson said in Bend that they wanted that battle to continue all the way through and Kevin McGiven on Saturday when we talked to him said the same thing that he expected that battle to go all the way through fall camp. So, I mean, Anderson from what I understand didn't anoint Marcus McMarion as the backup right. but just said noted that there was some separation between Seems the like two. Seems like yeah, he's solidly number two at this point yeah. and Mason Moran would either have to make a charge to, to overtake him or McMarion would have to have some sort of drop off and you know we're two weeks away from the opener right. so hopefully for you know for the team's sake that's not too likely yeah well there's still lots that can happen in the next two weeks and we of course will will be here every single practice um, giving you all the updates and all the stories that that we can so for Danny Moran I am Gina Mizell we will catch you next time